In this presentation, we will take a look at adjusting entries related to loan payables using our simplified bookkeeping method, our cash basis bookkeeping method. These are the entries we would expect the tax preparer or financial statement preparer to make at the end of the time period, but it's useful for us to understand what they might look like so we can know what to expect and what we need to provide in a more thorough way. We will for more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. We'll open now our QuickBooks file for the Q1 file, the more simplified bookkeeping process, and we will open the Excel sheet for our adjusting entry process. So we're gonna go into the data files. We're gonna open up the QB1 file, and that's QuickBooks file. As that opens, we're also going to open up some loan related information. We're going to open up the documents. We're going to open up the 2019 documents. I'm going to open up this loan document. That's going to be an amortization table. Might be a better name for it if we called it amortization table. And then we're going to have the adjusting entry for QuickBooks 1 or Q1 that we'll take a look at and examine some of these adjustments we may have. Here we are in QuickBooks, Home tab open, Open Windows open, View Open Windows lists is how to open them. Then we're going to open up our trial balance, go into the Reports drop down. We're going to go down to the Accounting and Taxes and look at the trial balance. Within the trial balance, we'll change the date range from 010119 to 123119. And so here's our information. We're looking here at the loans now. So how did the loans get put on the books and what are we going to do with the loans? Now, we talked about the loans with relation to the equipment was purchased. That's one kind of issue that we have. We're going to look and say, hey, are there any loans that we haven't recorded? Because if there are, then we're going to have to, if at least for taxes, pick up the interest if it's deductible on the loan. So we're going to ask the client to provide any loans. And the first thing is, well, if we hadn't picked up a loan, they can add it. Now, we've already taken a look at that situation where we financed the loan. Now, if we go into our, our loan payable, the issue is, well, we have these loans on there, but now they're making payments on, for example, this payment was made on the $50,000 loan. So what are we going to do with the payments that we get? Remember, in the simplified method here, what we said is we're just going to make the entire payment go to the loan account, reducing the entire loan, the, the loan by the principal payment. So we made a payment of 944 reduce the loan by 944 not exactly proper because some of that payment is going to be interest and we didn't break out the interest and the principal we said hey we're going to leave that to be done at the end of the time period by the accountant or tax preparer who can then make an amortization schedule if needed and then can make that adjustment so what we need to do then at the end of the year for the adjustment is to figure out how much of that loan is interest so that we can basically write it off at least for taxes having the expense for it so we're going to provide the information and then they can make then the amortization table which we did in the past we've already done this so i won't recreate the amortization table but it would look something like this we would all they would have is the loan the monthly payments the rate uh and the rate and we can basically figure out the interest and principal the problem is that the, the although the payment's the same the interest and principal will differ as we go down here so what we need to do then is break out the interest and principal portion so in our example we still only have the two months of information in our data here and so we had we have to determine where we are in terms of the loan the loan in order to do this so if we go to the loan we made one payment so really if we take a look at our amortization table we're only like right here this is where we're at and so what we need to do then is break out the interest and principal portion. If there were multiple payments, then we'd have to break out, you know, multiple interest and principal between all the payments. Here it's only 208 is, is interest. The rest is principal. The reason our simplified bookkeeping does it this way is because the next payment, this portion will differ. And it's easier for us to just say, hey, we're just going to do it all in one and then let the adjustment happen at the end of the time period. We could make this adjustment if we want to with accordance with the, the table. And we can actually work with someone else if we want to do the easy journal entry and then and then we make this adjustment if we want but meaning we make it easy for them by making the journal entry repetitive always the same and then we we can then go back in and, and make a periodic adjustment here according to the amortization table if we want 
and or that's how we can work with an accountant to do that yearly or monthly make this year an adjustment just basically breaking out the interest that's one way we can approach this method so what we're going to do then is make this adjusting entry into let's first do it into excel here so we'll, we'll open up our excel document and this is how the adjusting entry worksheet might look and we're going to be taking a look at this loan payable and we're just going to we're going to uh, record the interest portion of it was reduced too much by interest so we're actually going to have to increase it and we're going to have an interest expense payment expense down here so i've added the interest expense so we're going to copy the interest expense it'll be on your copy we'll copy that and we're going to put that over here right click and paste it one two three that's going to be the expense side and the other side's going to go to this loan payable so we're going to copy the loan payable and we're going to enter that into loan payable paste one two three and we'll just pull this amount from our table so we're going to have our table here and the interest was at 208 over here we'll just say the 208 is the amount debit and credit for 208 so if we record this interest expense then this is the amount that would basically be deductible now we're at the interest expense equals or possibly where well, i'm not giving we're, we're going to say it's going to be an expense which will increase the expense decrease net income and then we're going to go to the loan payable loan payable double click on that and go to the end of it i'm going to adjust it. there's already something in there here i'm going to adjust it now by this amount and it goes to 55 264. now you might say well how do we know that 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 amount is right well it should be equal to this here which is now 49 265. so if we take out the calculator it should be equal to 49 265 and then we know that there's actually another loan in there as well which is that 6000 so if we add 6000 to it then it should be at 55 265 so that's what we're at here so i'm going to close this out we'll go to quickbooks and we'll do that information in here same kind of thing i'm going to close this out we will go to the company and we're going to go to the make journal entry and we'll make it as of 12 31 1 9 and the journal entry will just be interest expense it should be there because quickbooks uh, gives us that account typically with just about any type of business we set up so although we haven't used it it's there for 208 dollars 208 and this is going to be interest journal entry so well, let's just say adj for the interest expense say the expense and then we're going to copy this down here and the other is going to go to the loan payable so that'll be our transaction we'll save and close and so now our loan payable is at that 55 260, uh, 264, which that's what we should be at. That's what is here. And then we've got our interest expense that uh, should be here now as well. So the interest expense is 208. So that's going to be our adjustment. Now, the adjustment for the full process when we did the more complex system is we actually got this information and we made the amortization table. And we broke out the interest and principal portion within it so if we did that this is one that we can do as we go if we want to get this amortization table either by creating it or getting it from our accountant that we're working with just ask them to make it uh, with the information of the loan then we could break out the interest and loan and that that would make this process a little bit easier for them this is one of the entries that we can do note that some of them we can do as we go and we will be more on a cruel basis as we go and some of them we can't like the depreciation probably not worth it for us to try to calculate it if we can have the tax software done doing it this one i mean it might the process it's just as simple if we have someone that doesn't mind doing this adjustment at the end but if if we're not working with someone where we have that clear exchange between the two then we might want to do it just so we make sure that we we pick this up for more accounting information and accounting courses visit our website at accountinginstruction.info